How's it guys? Today I'm going to go through a air can service on an M212 and an X313. Uh, DT Swiss have made these seal kits available specifically for the air can. So we're going to cover all aspects of this and quickly do the service. To perform this operation today we're going to need a shock pump, our rubber mallet, slick honey, a valve core remover, our seal drivers, isopropyl alcohol and the seal kit from the manufacturer. Like always when I'm dealing with uh, an air uh, shock, I'm always going to start off by checking the air pressure. So we'll undo our little valve here, stick on our pump. Check our air pressure, in which case once we assemble it, we can put it back to the correct pressure again. Remove your shock pump. Undo our valve core keeping it away from your face at all times because there's high pressure behind you. Okay, then I'm going to take my shock like this and I'm going to put it in my vise, but remember I'm always going to use the soft jaws. I'm going to then anti-clockwise open the air can and unscrew it all the while keeping the shock in a straight line. So just a tip, it's very important at this stage to make sure by checking that your valve is lying outside the shock um, that there is actual no air inside because if you try and remove this with air on it's very dangerous it will fly off and hurt somebody so take good care to remember that you remove all the air and the valve to be sure when you're dealing with a new shock always just uh, turn the new dial um, just to make sure that there's no more air in the second chamber okay so we pull it off um, I want to have a look at the uh, inside here. I'm looking for burrs and scratches that will affect uh, the air can from holding pressure. Um, I also want to inspect the shaft. Um, I'm also looking for burrs or scratches. Any small scratches here, if I can feel it with my nail, it's going to let air through. So we're going to start out by removing the seals that we need to. We're going to start out with the top one. Just Pinch it with your fingers, pull it out, put it aside. Next one I'm going to take off would be um, the glide ring. Just gently take that off, put it aside. Your main air seal. Just gently remove that, there we go. Alright, so at this point I just want to draw your attention to the ABS system, which is this little valve here. How this works is when the shock is pumped up, uh, as, it, as it slowly goes into the air valve, into the air chamber, sorry, it, it actually pushes this open, which allows the air to equalize from the positive into the negative side of the chamber. Um, so you want to keep this area free of grease that, will, that could possibly block up that. And also be sure when you're putting the air chamber on that you don't catch this on the side um, and bend it. Alright, so uh, moving on to our air chamber now. We've given it a nice clean, as you can see, you've got your main air seal that holds in the negative air and behind that you have your glide ring which uh, is press fitted in to hold the main air seal. So we're going to need to take that out. I'm going to actually use a socket that's a nice snug fit in there. You'll have to find one that fits snugly. I use a 22 and I'm going to just push by hand and release the two seals or the one main seal inside there which is this, this is the main air seal on the negative side and then you'll see we have the glide ring which I'm going to check and clean uh, what I'm looking for here is cracks or breaks if it is cracked or broken I need to replace it with a new one um, so the, sh the, sh the shock actually runs on this glide ring and as you can see when, the, when this touches the ABS system um, it releases the air from the positive side into the negative and balances the whole setup allowing this to uh, work with a negative uh, air spring. Alright so to further finish this off I want to take my cloth clean out the air can make sure it's nice and clean I'm also going to look a little bit further into the air can to make sure there's no scratches or uh, any signs of wear and tear inside there. 
If I'm confident that it's good, I'm going to go ahead and assemble the main air seals. All right, so to start out with, I'm going to open my air can kit that I've put aside here. Spread out my seals. And I'm going to start out with my main seal, which is uh, the one that will fit in the top here. Take a little bit of the slick honey. Just run, run it around the seal. All right, so now I need to take my first um, seal driver. I'm going to place the seal in the slot available. Put the glide ring on for that. Put this on like that. Take uh, the press. Push it down firmly in place. And snugly inside the shaft. Or inside the air can. Okay, secondly, I'm going to take my glide ring. I'm going to put a bit of slick honey on that as well. You see the glide ring is a specific uh, hole on the bottom and the top is flat. We need to position that into the space provided. Uh, push this over the uh, air can or push the air can over that. Um, get our press again, push down on it. And to be 100% sure, I like to use the rubber mallet. Just Make sure that's seated nice and tight. So actually what happens is the glide ring compresses the seal and just ensures a tight fit. Uh, next one, I'm going to just take a little bit of slick honey. Doesn't need to be a lot. Just go around the inside of the air can. Get my uh, main uh, air can seal, which is the top one. This one, the round o-ring. I'm going to put that over. <coughs> that seats on top in the position provided okay just make sure it's in it's in seated nicely all the way around you put a little bit of slick honey on the threads there just to make sure that it seats nicely all right next I'm going to take uh, my, my other main air seal put a bit of slick honey on it again okay so when I fit it over I make sure that I fit it around the ABS uh, system first just so that I don't mistakenly hook that um, and damage it in any way. Okay, so now the important thing to remember is the main air can seal holds this uh, positive chamber in check. So we need to put it at the top um, and not at the bottom. It can be uh, quite confusing sometimes. People put it like this, that won't hold air properly. We've got to actually put it at the top because the glide ring that I'm going to fit now actually slides over and fits directly underneath there like that. So I'm going to take a little bit of the slick honey. Okay, I'm going to go around the seals with the slick honey on my finger just to lightly coat the outside of the seals. Keep in mind, I don't want to get too much grease in this area here. Okay, again, I'm also going to take the slick honey that I've got and just lightly coat the um, uh, body of the shaft like that uh, just to make sure that, the, that there is enough lube on it. All right, and then I'm going to go back to my air can, take a little bit of slick honey. I'm going to get inside the air can like that. Um, just get it around the outside um, so that when I push the, um, the shaft inside there now, it's going to be nice and smooth. And another little dab just to provide a bit of lubrication uh, for the seal on the front. To assemble, I slide the two together, I can just push by hand. The ABS system will um, allow the air to be released from the positive side, from the negative chamber into the positive chamber, and I can then safely put the shock together, take it, put it in the vise. It's advisable at this point just to grab a cloth, uh, one of your nice lint-free cloths, and just clean all the slick honey that's on the outside of the shock, uh, because that's going to make it difficult for you to close this properly. Okay, if the shock is assembled properly, you'll note that the, the decal is in line with either the front part or the back part of the shock. In this case, it's uh, in line with the back part of the shock. Um, and you can see the arrow, so we know that the air can is on correctly. 
All right, so when we at that position now, it's time for us to put our um, valve back in. We put the valve in and tighten it up nicely. We're going to pump it up to the pressure that we had. So in this case, it was 150 PSI. All right, so what I like to do at this stage, once I've pumped it up, is actually to put it into a water bath. Um, and the water bath will actually just show me if any of the air or if any of the seals have been uh, incorrectly fitted or if there's anything that's causing this to leak uh, because the air will leak out of it uh, as soon as I put it in the water bath. So I'll let it sit in the water bath for about half an hour just to make sure that there is no air coming out of it. Once I'm done with that, don't forget to put on your little sag ring um, and give it a nice clean with some isopropyl alcohol. Give it a nice clean. And not forgetting to put the valve cap on. And we're ready to go. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, if you've got any questions, uh, leave us a comment or give us a call. Thanks for watching.